Hi guys, Nameless Crusader here from the Justice Crew of Oshawa. Uh, for this video, I thought I'd take some time to do the first video of a different type of series that I wanted to do. Uh, what I call the Life Advice Series. Uh, these videos are more meant for people who are looking for life tips uh, and not made specifically for RLSH, although it applies equally to them uh, and us as anyone else. For those of you viewers who don't know what an RLSH is, it stands for Real Life Superhero. Individuals such as myself uh, who adopt an anonymous persona, both on camera and out on the streets, who go out and do their best to improve their community in their own unique way. Uh, boiled down, we're basically costumed uh, activists. Uh, this video in particular is focused on the concept of being successful and the elements that go into that. There are five important ingredients that I believe, when mixed together appropriately, constitute a strong, healthy approach to getting done what you set out to do. Uh, having the right mindset, work ethic, clear goals and paths, risk management, and expected outcomes. Uh, by no means am I a millionaire yet, uh, but I have been fairly successful in life. I can't give you a lot of details since, you know, the whole anonymous superhero thing, but I have a main career that I've had for a year and a half, uh, sitting at about $42,000 a year. Uh, I have a side business that's becoming increasingly profitable, uh, and I'm aiming to be a published author by this time next year, uh, and finally still able to find time to dress up like a weirdo and go patrol the streets and do other goody two shoes type stuff. Uh, my point is that uh, through the methods described in this video, I'm speaking from experience and not just talking out of my ass. Uh, so watch until the end, you might actually be surprised. So the first of the five topics I'll be covering uh, is having the right mindset, and I think this is the most important of the five. One popular concept you might have heard of is positive reinforcement. Fuck positive reinforcement. It's bullshit feel-good advice that does nothing but fill your head with false hopes, and when you inevitably fail from this shit advice, it hits you that much harder. You need to be able to look at things realistically. You need to hope for the best, prepare for the worst, and expect the unexpected. Progressing to your goal will be hard, and there are times where it will suck. It's a universal constant, not specific to you. Everyone experiences it, whether they talk about it or not. When shit hits the fan, you need to go, yep, that just happened, and clean yourself off. Another thing you have to learn is to accept negative feedback. If someone tells you that something you're doing is wrong, and how you may potentially improve it, the stupidest thing you can do is ignore it. Without being specific, my job requires me to take criticism and improve on my work on a daily basis. If I don't get any, I actively seek it out, and you should too. Uh, remember the saying, praise is the killer of progress. Uh, one final point on the matter is that when things inevitably do go wrong, don't be quick to point fingers and shift the blame. Take a closer look at yourself and consider what you might have possibly done wrong. If you could have done something differently to avoid the current problem, being able to say, yep, I fucked up, is crucial. Having the right mindset gives you the proper perspective on things and serves as a good foundation. Uh, so. The second topic of conversation is one most people think they understand, but I don't think they have a full grasp on, and that's the concept of work ethic. A primary aspect of this is your focus, which is the part most people seem to understand. Uh, you know, stay focused, don't get distracted, maintain discipline, uh, work on something until it's complete. After all, if you're not working on something, you're definitely not making progress. Another important part of this, but less recognized or incorporated, is time management. Having even just a rough estimate, even if it's not completely accurate, or just a wild guess, at least lets you have an anchor point to measure your progress towards. Even if your estimated time drastically overshoots how long you thought it would take you to do something, 
you can measure exactly how off your time frame was. If the thing you want to accomplish is something long term or large in scope, break it down into smaller unique tasks and make an estimate of each. That way you can add them up and get the total estimate for something more complex. Uh, I myself have to deal with this uh, sort of thing, task estimates, every day at work, and it's vital to my bosses so they know what will get done in a given week. Uh, a final note on the matter is that it doesn't just matter how hard you work, but how long. The more hours you put into your goals on a weekly basis, the more progress you make. I can't give you an exact number of hours a week as it's up to you to decide how many hours a week you're willing to give up for your pursuit of success. But for a point of reference, I work a grand total of about 80 hours a week. Yes, 80. 40 hours for my primary employment, 25 hours for my side business, 10 hours working on my novel, and the remaining 5 plus hours on my efforts as a real life superhero. It might sound rough, but with the right focus and application, you can turn into a powerhouse. Hit the ground running and hit it hard. The third point of this video is to discuss the idea of having a very strong idea of not only your end goal, but also the path to get there, including each step of the way, as well as milestones. Uh, think of milestones as completing different elements that constitute the whole. For instance, if your goal is to save for a car, your first milestone might be hitting 10% of your budget saved. If you're exercising, a milestone might be the first time you go out running and are able to run for 10 minutes without getting winded. A good point I want to bring up about this though is that things will never go according to plan. No matter how much you plan every little detail, there will always be a wrench thrown into things that messes up your plan. It's impossible to counteract this, but you can minimize the effects. When making your plan, rather than using exact metrics, try to account for variance. Uh, when planning your timeline, add an additional 10 to 15% as a buffer in case shit goes sideways. Uh, so say for example, you have a huge bill to pay while saving for a car, or get too busy to go running, your expected timeline is guarded against this. And hey, if you finish up without any issues, that additional buffer carries over to the next milestone, allowing you even more time in case things go wrong. It's always better to overestimate than underestimate. Another point I want to make is that even with this planning and added buffer in case things go wrong, something spectacularly shitty is always bound to happen to muck up even the best laid plans beyond repair. Be prepared to adjust your path and completion estimation at a moment's notice. If you suddenly lose your job, you can't save for a car, uh, and if you sprain your ankle, you can't run for at least a month. Things happen, so there's no real way around this. If something needs to be done with a hard deadline, the chances of hitting it even with the right attitude, work ethic, and timeline planning are probably 90% or less. If possible, try to aim to complete something well before it's needed, but always be prepared for the possibility you'll need to realign your entire plan. It's just the name of the game. Uh, last point of interest on this topic is knowing how to play the long game. Sometimes certain aspirations take years to achieve, and sometimes you have to sacrifice in the short term to benefit long term. Uh, for instance, if you want to save for a car, you might not have as much money, if any at all, to go out drinking with friends. Or if you're exercising, you might be extremely worn out for the first couple weeks until your body gets used to it. Uh, another example is my decision to go to college. Uh, I spent four years of my life and almost $40,000 in student loans uh, on an education I wasn't even guaranteed to get employment from, which thankfully I did, so that worked out for me. Uh, my point is that to sum it all up, is that having a clear idea of your goals and paths to achieve them with the expectation that it might have to change will keep you motivated and your eyes on the prize. The fourth topic I would like to cover is risk management. The most common reason I hear for people who don't want to pursue their dreams is their fear of failure. That to me sounds like an excuse. Risk is present in daily life in some form or another. 
every time you drive to work, you could get into a crash. Every time you turn on your computer, you could blow a fuse. You need to learn to accept the fact that there's risk involved in everything you do and not let the fear of risk or failure caused by it keep you back. My primary point on this is that if something is worth doing, you should do it in spite of the risks involved. Even if you fail, you should at least try. Even if you fail, you're better off for having at least tried. Uh, another thing that needs to be realized is that not only is failure at some point on the road likely to happen, but I can pretty much guarantee that it will happen. When planning, assume that you could possibly fail at every step of the way. Because somewhere along the line, something's going to happen. Plan for it, and how to correct yourself back onto the proper path should something happen. And that leads me to my last point. Have a backup plan for everything. That way, when something does go wrong, you have a plan for it. Have backup plans for your backup plans. That might sound excessive, but would you rather worry about something now and be ready for it when it happens, or be extremely stressed out when it does happen because you have no idea what to do? Basically, risk and failure are a part of life. Accounting for it is the only thing that you can really do. Pursue your dreams and accept that life is naturally a risky affair, but that's no reason to avoid the pursuit of things you want to do in life. The final topic I'd like to cover is the outcomes of your goals themselves. It might seem pretty straightforward, but there's more complexity to the outcome of your path uh, to your goal than most people realize. The most important point on that is that people don't often realize that outcomes are not usually a binary outcome of success or failure. There's actually several possible outcomes, usually in tiers of success or failure, <clears throat> and even outcomes that aren't expected. For instance, if you're saving up for a car, maybe you're saving up for a Toyota Matrix, but you encounter a large sum of money and or a better job, and suddenly you can afford a Tesla that you've always wanted. You still succeeded, but with a vastly larger margin than the original goal. Uh, conversely, let's say that you wanted a matrix, but your goal changed over time to be a hybrid Prius. Still a success, but the end result was not as originally intended. Your goal and path can be fluid, and don't feel like you need to be locked down to specifics. Uh, my second point on the matter is to develop the probability of each expected outcome. The sum of each possible outcome should amount to 100% split amongst the different possibilities. Uh, for instance, you might perceive a 50% chance of success of achieving your Toyota Matrix, a 20% chance of succeeding but with a cheaper car, and a 30% chance of outright failure to have enough money by the deadline due to uncertainties. The final point for this is that you should be educated not only on the product of your goal, but also the path to get there. This should go without saying. In the Toyota Matrix analogy, you want to know how much it's going to cost, the fees and taxes that will be on top of it, how much the car will have depreciated in value by then, how much money you'll be able to save on a monthly basis, how stable your job is, where you'll go for driver's ed, where you'll be dri dri taking your driving tests, keeping in mind the mandatory wait time between tests, how much your insurance is going to be, so on and so forth. And that's just to save for a car. Uh, if you ever think you've learned enough on a subject, you are wrong. There's a famous quote I like, uh, the more you know, the more you know you don't know. Uh, knowing not only the different outcomes, but the probability of each is important to match up against your end result. Whew. So, this video was probably not at all what you were expecting. I was brutally honest and definitely didn't pull any punches. This is a result of the amalgamation of my own life experiences mixed with the study of pervasive, motivated people like Elon Musk. I myself am almost 30 years old with several successful ventures in life, with plans and paths well into the future. You are awesome and you will put your best foot forward. If you have any reservations about anything in this video, just give it a shot on one single aspect of your life and tell me if it doesn't improve it. It's a lot of effort, but anything in life worth doing usually is. And make no mistake, there are times where it will suck, where it looks like you're going to fail, where you want to flip your desk and say fuck it. 
A great man once said, if you're going through hell, keep going. Make a plan, stick to it, and write it out to the end. And remember one last thing before I sign off. No matter how old you are, it's never too late. Nameless Crusader, signing off.